Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on filter design. Okay, so for this video, I'm going to introduce all the formulas that are required to design a bandpass filter using N capacitivity couple series resonator. Okay, so this video, I'm going to introduce all the formulas that we need in order to design this bandpass filter that have this N capacitive couple effect. Okay, so on my next video, I will have an example how to actually design this bandpass filter. Okay, so the example will make use of all the formulas that I introduced in this video in order to design this bandpass filter capacity couple resonator. So this will be the part 28 series discussion on filter design. So guys, if you're keen to know more about filter design, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on filter design. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, I strongly urge you guys to ask me the question through the comment. Okay, so this is because I hardly check this email. So guys, if you want to have a faster response, ask me through the comment. Okay, you can also suggest the topics that you guys are keen. Okay, so again, okay, send through the topics that you guys are keen through the comment. You can also give me some comment. How can I actually improve the quality of this channel? Once again, thank you so much. Okay, before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help me by like this video. Okay, when more of you guys actually like this video, this video will have a higher chances to reach out to a larger audience. So guys, help me by like this video now. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. Okay, so let's quickly understand how can we actually design this end couple microchip line. Okay, so basically this diagram here shows the end couple microchip bandpass filter. Okay, so why this is called end couple? As you can see that this is one microchip line, this is another microchip line. You can see that there is a gap or there's a slot in between the two microchip line. And what happened here is basically you can imagine that the waveform actually just couple from one microstrip line to another microstrip line. Hence, this is what we know as N couple. Okay, and then these are all microstrip line. Okay, so each open end microstrip line resonator, they are approximate half of wavelength as reference to the midpoint frequency of the bandpass filter. Okay, so basically this will be one microstrip line. Okay, the length okay, will be half of wavelength. Okay, so basically this will be also half of wavelength, same for the rest. So all these microstrip line will have half of wavelength with reference to the midpoint frequency of the bandpass filter. Okay, so this is what illustrated over here. Okay, the coupling between the resonator occur through the gap between their adjacent open ends. Okay, so basically you can see that there will be some coupling effect okay, because they are spaced quite near to each other. Okay, so therefore there is some form of coupling and this form of coupling we know as capacitive coupling, okay, as it lasts over here. Okay, in this case here, the gap can be replaced by J inverter. Okay, the coupling, okay, all this part can be replaced by this J inverter. Okay, so basically this is the diagram. How does the J inverter look like? So all the coupling can be easily replaced by this J inverter. Okay, let's go through here. Okay, so basically this will be all the capacity gap. Okay, so basically as I mentioned, the capacity gap couple resonator as I have explained on the previous slides here. So this will be the capacity gap couple resonator bandpass filter. So again, earlier on on my previous page, I have mentioned that this gap can be replaced by a J inverter. Okay, so this is what I have drawn on the previous page here. So the gap can be replaced by this J inverter. So this is what we know as a transmission line model. And easily all this so-called J inverter, it can be replaced by this block here. So basically this will be the equivalent circuit using inverter and also lambda over two resonator. Okay, so this will be the inverter. This will be the lambda over two resonator. This will be the inverter. This will be another lambda over two resonator. And this go on and on. Okay, so task the filter under consideration. 
they actually operate like a sun resonator type of filter whose general equation are given as following. Okay, so for this video, let's not do well so much on the formula. Okay, let's understand how can we actually apply this formula. So on my next video, I will show you how can we actually apply this formula to design a band pass filter. At this moment, okay, just let's denote this as equation 1, this as equation 2, and this as equation 3. Okay, so if you have followed through my channel, okay, you actually know what are all these terms here. But let me quickly understand. Okay, let me just quickly so far mention what are all these terms here. So all this G0, G1, G2, etc. These are all the elements of a ladder type low pass filter with a normalized cutoff frequency. So in short, all this G0, G1 you can actually find from a table. Okay, and you can get all this value G0, G1, etc. And this FBW is what we call a fractional bandwidth. Okay, for a bandpass filter. Okay, so I have also discussed how can we actually obtain this fractional bandwidth here. Okay, so over here you can see that this term here, okay, this term here is known as the characteristics emittance of J inverter, as you can see from here. So this part here will be known as the characteristics emittance of J inverter. For this Y not here basically will be the characteristics emittance of the microstrip line. Okay, so basically over here, this will be for the microstrip line emittance. Okay, over here is impedance, but take note, this will be the emittance. And this part here, J, okay, will be replaced by this J term over here, J, J, J plus 1 here. Okay, let me quickly so-called uh, make some disclosure. Uh, this is actually what we have, the final design on the microstrip line. On my next video, actually, okay, on the example, okay, but I think that, uh, with this, I can make my explanation easier. So this is the final layout okay, of a capacitive copper resonator bandpass filter. Okay, so over here you can see that they are actually symmetric. Okay, so they are symmetric here. So basically, this will be the input, this will be the output, and if this is the input and this will be the output, the outcome will be the same. So therefore, you can see that this gap here, okay, they will be the same. So therefore, I conclude that B zero one will be equal to B three four. And B12 will be the same as B23. And once I have this kind of establishment, you can see that I don't really need to count this. Okay, because J01 okay, will be similar with J34. Okay, because as I mentioned, these two are they are similar. So therefore they are actually similar. So therefore, when I calculate this, I will also calculate J34 here. Same for this case here, J12 and J23, they are similar. So basically, once I have calculated just one, I think it's good that we don't need to calculate another one. Okay, so later on, on my example, okay, I will further explain this. But at this moment, you can see that typically for this kind of capacitive couple resonator, they will be symmetric and you don't need to repeat your calculation as shown over here. Next, okay, assume the capacitive gap act as perfect series capacitor. Okay, discontinuity of subsistence. Okay, this part here will be the subsistence here. Okay, so as I mentioned, okay, for this video, let's not do well so much on the formula. So this is another set of formula. This I will denote as equation 4. This will be equation 5. Okay, so basically what it means that this will be a capacity. Okay, so effect here. So this gap here, I can actually represent as a perfect series capacitor by this value here. And then basically this subsetance and this beta j, they are actually evaluate at F0, okay, which means that the midpoint of the bandpass filter. Okay, as referring to the equivalent circuit of microstrip line gap, okay, the coupling gap, okay, basically this will be the coupling gap here of the microstrip and couple resonator can be determined as to obtain the series capacitor that specified. Okay, so this part here allowed me to calculate the series. Okay, so this is the series, this will be the sun, sun capacitor. So the series capacitor, I can easily calculate by this formula here. So if you still remember, this B term, I actually can be easily calculate from here. So what I need to do is basically divide by, let's say this is by 50 ohm, Z0 is 50 ohm. So basically why not is equal to 1 over 50 ohm. So I can easily calculate by B term if I manage to find the value of this number here. So over here, I can easily also find my series capacitor. So basically this will be my series capacitor which can be easily be found by this equation here. And this W0 is actually equals to 2 pi F0. Okay, so F0 is on the cutoff frequency or the center point of frequency 
of the band pass filter. Okay, for this example here, okay, the F block will be at 6 gigahertz if I didn't remember wrongly. Okay, so basically later on you will take a look on this here, will be the angular frequency at the mid band of a band pass filter. Okay, so let's continue here. Okay, so you if you still remember, I can easily find my series capacitor, but however, I may have some issue finding my parallel or sun capacitor. So therefore, I need to make you some simulation to help me to find the sun or parallel so-called so capacitor here, as shown over here. But how can we actually find this here? Okay, so earlier on, okay, so not rather than earlier on, later part, I'm going to design this band pass filter. Okay, let's say the width, okay, so these two micro strip line, the width will be the same, which having 1.1 meter here. Okay, and this micro strip line basically will be having this substrate 10.8 and the height of the micro strip line will be 1.27 millimeter okay so basically these are the characteristic of the so-called roger board i believe so basically this will be the microchip line to design a band pass filter okay having this characteristic here so what you need to do is you just draw these two microchip line with the width of 1.1 here and also with 1.1 here okay so basically the slot okay will be 0 0.05 okay so separation between these two microchip line will be 0 0.05 millimeter Okay, so therefore I run the simulation. Okay, so once the simulation end, okay, I actually want to obtain Y11, the imaginary part of Y11, and also the imaginary part of Y12. Okay, so basically this part here is actually the imaginary part. Okay, why I want to obtain the imaginary part? Okay, because over here you can see that I can easily calculate this CG, okay, which is the series capacitor by using this equation here. I can also calculate my sun or parallel capacitor by using this equation here so once i obtain all this so-called the imaginary part of the y parameters for this case is y11 for this case will be y12 i can easily compute my series capacitor and also my parallel cast my parallel capacitor as shown over here okay so after that i separate the gap into 0 0.1 mm again okay i run the simulation okay again i obtain the imaginary part of Y11 and also the imaginary part of Y12, which is this value here. Again, these two set of value will allow me to calculate what will be my series capacitor and also my parallel capacitor. Okay, so with this, okay, you can imagine that I just populate this table. Okay, so therefore, okay, later on, I can simply do interpolation. Okay, later on, on the example, you will see that I can do a simple interpolation. I will be able to design this band pass filter using capacitive copper resonator as a band pass filter. But over here, I just want to establish the relationship. And you can imagine that the slope you just keep on uh, increase, okay, and then you just drop down all the imaginary part at Y11, at Y12. And then after that, with these two set of equation, you can calculate both the series capacitor and also the parallel capacitor. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, the physical length of resonator are given by this. Okay, so the length of the resonator are given by this here. Okay, so what happened is basically this part here, okay, will be unknown. So this two part here, okay, will be given in this equation. So this, this length, okay, basically are the effective length of the shunt capacitor on the both end of resonator, say. Okay, so basically these are the both side of the resonator shunt capacitor here. So basically, by making use of this equation here, okay, so later on, I can sub inside here, I will be able to find the physical length of the resonator. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier on, for this video, let's not do well so much on the equation. On my next video, I will be able to show you how can we actually make use of this equation in order to design a band pass filter. Okay, so don't worry so much. Let's see the next video before you get worried how to use all this formula. Okay, so before I continue, okay, if you have learned something from this video, please help me to like and also subscribe to this channel. Let's quickly do a quick conclusion here. So these are the formulas that I have discussed earlier on. So as I mentioned, this will be equation 1, 2, and 3, which I have shown it to you. Okay, so same as for equation 4 and 5. Okay, all together, there are 11 equations. So basically, on my next video, I will be able to show how can we actually make use of this 11 equation to design a band pass user 
using capacity coupled resonator. So with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you.